Hi there, it's Claire from Clarified Creations, and today's video is going to be how I pass the NCLEX in 85 questions, and this is the next generation NCLEX since I tested in July of 2023. I am so excited to share with you guys what I did and just all the details related to NCLEX because it is such a big, scary exam. If you're new to this channel, I am a recently licensed registered nurse, and I'm going to be starting my new job on the cardiac floor in just a little bit, so make sure to subscribe. I'm just gonna start talking and see where this ends up. I do have my iPad here and I'm gonna share the resources I used, what all I did, what I thought was helpful, what I thought was not helpful, because oh my goodness, it can be so overwhelming to just even start studying. I also have my planner, which I'm gonna be referring to because I wrote down everything that I did as I was studying. Backing up a little bit, my journey to studying started May 1st of 2023, and that is when I purchased UWorld. So I'm going to say the resources I used, UWorld and Mark K. Those were pretty much the only resources that I truly looked at. And a lot of people have the big debate, UWorld versus Archer. I was also in that debate too, but that wasn't until after I had purchased UWorld. About a month later, I was on YouTube, of course, while I was in the middle of studying looking up what people did and a lot of people were using Archer, especially for the next gen. They were saying, you know, it mimics the NCLEX more. I failed with UWorld and that was very, very discouraging. Let me tell you, I panicked and I almost bought Archer too, even though I had already bought the entire package and had started studying. So there is that. A lot of people will say they prefer one over the other but I'm here to tell you guys, I did pass with UWorld in 85 questions. So if you also bought UWorld, don't panic like I did. Don't think you need to buy both of them because I really don't think you need to. So which package did I buy? I bought the 90 day subscription. So I have access to it for 90 days just because I wasn't sure when I was gonna test. And fun fact, it was a while. So good thing I did that. It came with two practice exams and the entire QBank. And towards the end of my studying, they also added a lot of lecture videos, which I really didn't look at much. I maybe watched one or two, but it is there if you guys need it, which is pretty helpful. Now, when did I actually start studying? I want to kind of go over the study plan I had because it did change. And if you are also wondering, when should I start studying for this? Let me just tell you all. If you know that you're not going to get your authorization to test anytime soon after graduation, don't try and study while you're in school. Enjoy your last little bit. I know I said enjoy nursing school, but it's so true. I had a lot of pressure from just people telling me, you need to study while you're in school. You need to be studying. Are you studying for the NCLEX? And this was back in maybe March, April. Quite honestly, you do not need to be studying three or four months for this exam. Now that's just my opinion. If you want to go ahead and study every day for four months, that's okay too. But from personal experience, you will forget. So if you start, you know, studying hard four months before, you're going to go back and think, I didn't remember all of that because your test date is so far away and there's only so much that you can fit without losing it all. The day I started studying was May 22nd and that is when I actually consistently started and I tried to do it a little bit while I was still in school. I did maybe three UWorld exams and that didn't work out too well for me because you know I'm trying to focus on graduating. I graduated May 18th and I wanted to take a couple days off after graduation. Just take a couple days off. You just graduated one of the hardest programs and probably one of the hardest things you've ever done in your life up until this point graduating. Timeline wise, I was thinking I was going to take maybe three and a half to four weeks and then I was going to test, get my ATT and it was going to be done and then I was going to have the rest of the summer. Well, that didn't didn't go anything according to plan. Like I said, my plan May 22nd I had a calendar and I wrote out everything I wanted to do. One of my classmates ended up posting the link to all 12 Mark K lectures 
And I knew I was going to listen to those because I've just heard so many good things about it. And if you all don't know who Mark K is, his name is Mark Klemek, and he made 12 lecture videos in preparation for the NCLEX. He has this live course review that you can go to and pay for it, but you can find the videos sometimes online. They do get taken down, so definitely look around, ask other people in your nursing cohort if they have access to it. I have a Google Drive that I've used and it worked, but you do have to download them because let me tell you, they will stop and start all day long and that gets frustrating when you're trying to listen to the lecture and you have to go back and replay. There are a couple of videos on YouTube where they have the notes up and you can follow along, but those are really hard to find as well. I don't know why YouTube keeps taking them down or it's just some sort of hidden thing. It really does help. Listen to Mark K. He breaks everything down so easy and it's really, really helpful to just have a plan and go through everything step by step. He has a lot of really good tricks to help you remember things, especially if you haven't reviewed acid base since the beginning of nursing school because that's when they teach you all the way two years ago. That was something that I completely forgot about and maybe wouldn't have even thought of to study. He has all those lectures. The plan was to listen to Mark K three times a week. So my goal was Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I was going to listen to one lecture and I was actually very, very fortunate because the year before me, one of the graduates from the UT nursing program came and talked to us about NCLEX and everything like that and she actually posted her notes that she took from the Mark K lectures and let us use them and that's what I did. Let me just show you all the notes I started taking. So for his lectures, I was thinking, you know what, I'm going to take all my own notes, listen to them and everything. I used my iPad to just kind of go through, highlight, all of that. And can you tell this took me four hours to do, to listen to an hour and a half lecture. And I did that up until lecture five, and I got so tired of trying to write down everything he was saying, stopping and starting and pausing. And it just took too long. This is also going to be dependent on who you are, but I didn't find that writing it down was worth it because I already had someone else's notes and they were so much better. They were, well, not better, but they were so good. They were so detailed, all color coded and everything. And it decreased a lot of the time that I spent writing. It helped a lot to have someone else's notes, just follow along, write a couple notes down. I won't be sharing her notes because they're not mine and I can't do that. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I listened to the Mark K lectures and I also tried to do a little bit of UWorld on those days too. My main focus was his lecture and really trying to understand it and go through it. And afterwards I would go through some of the practice questions he asked and make sure that I got them right. Less than 50 questions a day to begin with, I tried it. And just because lecture and UWorld was a lot, my focus was on content and then I would supplement with UWorld. I tried to do 50 questions, but didn't always happen. And on Tuesday, Thursday, that's when I was hitting UWorld harder and would go more towards 85 questions. That was the complete goal. A couple other things I did, which I don't know if they were helpful or not. I looked up some farm videos by Mark Klemek and it said, you know, top, 50 drugs on the NCLEX and I tried to go through that. Here's a tip that no one tells you, but I'm gonna say it because I feel like it's gonna be very, very good to know. If you have grandparents or your parents are on medications, so if they're on blood pressure, cholesterol, anything like that, my biggest tip for you, it's gonna sound really weird, but it's to look at those labels and the bottles and read what their cautions are. An example would be, you know, on the package it might say, watch out for muscle pain. And seriously, you guys, it sounds really weird to go through other people's medications and look at their labels, but I am telling you, I think that's what NCLEX does. 
I don't know for sure what their strategy is. Just things you should know, cholesterol and blood pressure for sure. So if you have family members that have those medications, take a moment, it'll take maybe five minutes to go through them and just see what their ADRs are, adverse drug reactions and big side effects. Another thing that I did was I looked up some things that I knew I was really weak on. For some reason, I could not get in my brain SIADH versus DI, syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone versus diabetes insipidus. I always got those confused. If you are weak on certain subjects or insulin, I guess I would recommend maybe looking up a supplemental video, but don't spend all of your time on that. For how I organize my testing, a lot of people say to go by systems and everything, and I did try that, but I didn't really love it, so I just did completely randomized tests on everything. So it could have been mother, baby, newborn, med, surge, psych, peds. It was all combined because that's what the NCLEX is going to be like. And I thought if I just get myself used to it like that, it'll be a lot easier. It's really up to you guys though. If you want to do it by system, you can to see what areas you're weaker in and focus more on that. And I did do that for some of psych and mom, baby, but I got tired of just it all being one content because I like to change things up. My lowest score was a 38% and when I tell you that was crushing, <laughs> I saw that and freaked out. 50, 53%, 66, 56%, 73%, 68, 80, 59, 88, 77, 56, 67. I was all over the place and the higher percentages were the ones that I did individually like if it was just sight. Averaging kind of in the 50s at first. Going along, I'm keeping to this schedule Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I tried to take the weekends off because there's a lot of staying and I was very, very tired. June 2nd, I got a message over my group me saying that one of my classmates got their authorization to test. And I was thinking, oh no, I am not prepared to take the NCLEX right now if I get my ATT. That's when I started really going hard. I finished the Marquet lectures June 7th, so I really just went through them. May 27th is when I took my first UWorld practice test to see how well I was doing. I took it only after about a week of studying to kind of gauge what I needed to do. Surprisingly, I got a 77% and I scored a very high chance of passing the NCLEX, which made me feel really good good especially after only five days of work. I felt like I was on the right track and that was really really good to see. On Memorial Day I did 20 U World questions. May 29th. May 30th I did 85 U World questions. The 31st is when I you know heard about Archer and I did their free 85 CAD exam. I also did well on that one. 20 U World questions on June 1st. 83 on June 2nd, and this was the ramp ramp up day. Changed everything up to my schedule. In between the Marquet lectures, if I listen to one, say I listen to lecture five on Tuesday, Wednesday, I would listen to lecture six, but I would also use my whiteboard and go back and try and remember the things that he taught and the things that I knew I had learned the previous day. 90 questions June 3rd, 73 June 4th, 81, 111, 61, 95, 111, 83, 78. So you can see I really was trying to get around 100 questions. June 12th, I got an email saying that my transcript was sent on June 8th. So that's kind of when I knew that, hey, I might be getting my ATT really soon. No, I wasn't, but that's what I thought. So I continued to do this. My scores were getting better, 65%, 71%. On June 14th, I wrote, I am losing all motivation because it's a lot to go that hard for a longer period of time. The third week of June, I kind of realized I wasn't going to get my ATT anytime soon. So I sort of took it slower. And slower. June 30th, 1047 p.m. I mentioned this in one of my earlier vlogs, but in case you didn't watch that, I finally got my ATT and I registered for as soon as I possibly could. And my exam was originally scheduled for July 15th, a Saturday at 3:30, which I wasn't super excited about. I clicked it and I actually got to reschedule it because I went to Maryland the first week of July and I was 
on a mission trip with my church and things were very busy. I didn't have a whole lot of time to keep checking, but thankfully I did and I got it rescheduled earlier for July 12th at 7.30 a.m. Got back from Maryland and studied harder and harder and tried to, you know, push myself to the very end. Two days before I did 136 questions, I did a 36 question practice of just everything on New World, and then the 100 question was the last exam to take a readiness exam, I guess is what they might call it, practice test. This time I scored a 72% and just a high chance of passing. Guys, don't let it freak you out if it says only high chance of passing. You've done a lot of work and don't panic. Everything that I did on UWorld, I would read the rationales for, which is very, very important, you guys. Definitely, once you're done testing, I would go through the test. I wouldn't put it on tutor mode or anything because I wanted to mimic the NCLEX as much as possible. So I'd do a clump of questions and then I would review it. I wouldn't click one, have them tell me the answer, and then go because I just didn't find that to be as efficient. I wanted to do it all at once, which was kind of hard sometimes when you had a 100 questions to go through and read all the rationales. If I got a question right and I felt okay about it. This is what someone else said on YouTube, which I thought was good. You don't always need to read it. If you do have time, definitely read the rationale if you can, but I just focused on the questions that I got wrong and wasn't sure about. Read why it's wrong, your answer, and also read the right answer. A lot of times I would skip to the bottom because they had a really great summary of what uh, the reasoning was behind it. Let's talk about the day before. This was a big day. I did vlog. I re-listened to the Mark K Lecture 12 Prioritization and Delegation because he says in that video, this is the most important video. So I re-listened to it, read over all the notes, read over all 36 pages of Mark K, or tried to. I mostly just skimmed it. And then did 50 U World questions, and that was it for the day. I think I did about four hours of work that day, which it's really up to you. Because I know a lot of people are going to tell you not to study, but are you really going to listen? Especially if you're a nursing student, I feel like that's just not possible for us sometimes. Stats the day before the exam. Let me just show you all. So you can see that I did 90% of the QBank. And here was my ranking. I ranked 63rd in the percentiles, averaged a 71% on exams. And let me just scroll down some more. This was time spent. So you can see I'm a little bit more of a faster test taker. I used a total of 2,433 questions that I practiced on, plus the two practice exam tests, which I'm not sure if they're included or not in here, but they're both 100 questions. I will put up my stats here in case you want to pause and look at it. And I do want to say these are simply my stats. And if you have higher stats or lower stats, it's not going to guarantee that you're going to pass or fail. Simply just putting it out there because I know a lot of you will probably want to know. NCLEX day, I'm not going to go through all of the things that happened on NCLEX day because I do have another vlog sharing my entire day. So if you want to know what the process is like, I already talked about that there, but I will just share some general tips and things that really helped me to prepare for this exam, what I maybe wish I would have done differently. Number one, make sure you go and visit the test site before your actual test day. Pearson testing, will I become licensed? find out in just a few short hours. This is so important, but it's really helpful, especially if you're already anxious about the exam. You guys do not need to be worried about how you're going to get there, what the drive is going to look like, where you're going to park, what building you go into. One of my professors that did the ATI live review back when I was still in school, she said the day beforehand or a couple days before, make sure you drive to the test center and know exactly what you're going to do. Try and do a test run. And I didn't actually drive because my parents were in Knoxville that day. I still went to the test center, walked up to the building so I knew where I was going to go and where to park. Tip number two, so make sure you have a full tank of gas 
it'll just help you out. Pack a good breakfast. Even if you're not a big breakfast eater, try and pack something. My mom made banana bread and that was really good. Listen to some good music. What I did the day before, I made a whole playlist specific for the NCLEG. If you know that you're probably not going to be there very long, or, you know, if you have been doing really well on New World and you don't think you're going to take all five hours, I say just bring what you need. Sure, you can bring snacks and water, but you're not allowed to access them while you're testing. You can take breaks. You have to go out of the exam room. I'm pretty sure you have to do the palm vein scan thing. It is a lot of work to take a break. Take them if you need them, but if you don't, I didn't bring water, I didn't bring snacks, I didn't bring anything except my car keys and my ID. That was all I took in with me. I wore a jacket because I thought I was going to be cold. Outfit wise, I recommend bringing just a shirt, if it's in the summer, shorts, comfortable shoes, you know, that kind of thing. Don't wear a lot of jewelry because I know that some people have said they're not allowed to wear rings or bracelets or in some cases necklaces. I wore a necklace just because um, I really wanted to. They didn't say anything to me about the necklace I wore. Another thing is to be there early and trying to determine your time that you're going to test and everything is a little overwhelming because there are a lot of options. Like I said, I took mine at 7.30 in the morning, which some of you guys might be thinking, why in the world would you want to wake up at the crack of dawn before the sunrise even happens to go take a really big exam? For me, it was just because I knew that I was going to be thinking about it all day if I didn't test first thing in the morning. And even so, waking up, I woke up at 4.45 that day. Those few short hours beforehand, I was already so nervous, and I didn't want to be sitting there until 3.30 or 5.30. It really depends on what kind of test taker you are. If you don't do well in the mornings, then don't schedule it for the morning. But if you just know yourself and know that you're gonna be anxious, go ahead and schedule it in the morning. I wouldn't say that I'm a morning person exactly. For my own sanity, that's what I had to do. There's 7.30, 8 o'clock, 12.30, 3.30, and I'm pretty sure there's a 531. Those might be some of your options, very dependent on location as well. Definitely don't miss this. Just because I passed in 85 questions does not mean that you have to pass in 85 questions too, or if you don't get 85 for next gen, that you're failing or anything. Of course, no one wants to take all 150 questions because you wanna be done as soon as possible because who doesn't want to be done with a test. Your worth and your intelligence is not based on how many questions you receive, so I did want to put that out there. Don't go into the exam expecting 85 questions. You can hope for it, but don't let that deter you if you do go to question 86 or question 100 or 150. It doesn't mean anything. I don't think there's ever going to be a patient that's going to look at you as an RN, see your registered nurse and ask you how many questions did it take for you to pass the NCLEX. Nobody really cares at that. You're a nurse at 85 questions. You're also a nurse at 150. There is no difference. Another tip that I have is random. For the whiteboard, they do give you a little whiteboard. And what my testing center did was it was a laminated graph piece of paper. And there were two fine tip expo markers almost sort of like the fine tip sharpies but they weren't sharpies and you're not allowed to erase anything once you start writing but i just wrote something encouraging at the top and i do encourage you all to do that as well it's very nice to look down at something especially while you're taking the test or if you do encounter a hard question you can look down at the whiteboard and just see a really good reminder of why you're doing this why you are wanting to be here because you all have worked so hard to get to this point that you're at. Testing is the last obstacle to becoming an RN. And I actually didn't even use the whiteboard, which was very surprising. Pretty sure those are the main tips I have for you all. The next thing I wanna talk about is the exam breakdown. Because it's completely randomized, you could get a lot of one thing and not a lot of the other. I had 12 select all that apply questions, which I thought was really bad because 
I felt like I was supposed to get more if I wanted to cut off at 85, but just putting that out there, I only had 12, which isn't a lot. Well, I know there's some people that get 25 or 50 or something crazy like that. I had four case studies, and throughout some of those case studies, there were some select all that apply, but I don't factor that in to the SATA. One sort of EKG strip, you had to know what the rhythm was to get the question right. So I did have that one. I actually didn't have any dosage calc. I didn't have any math, which was a little bit disappointing because I worked on memorizing all those conversions. Lab values, this is a big question and something I'm still not sure about. I didn't think that I really needed to know lab values. Obviously, you need to know what to do or tell if it's high or low and what side effects could happen from your labs being off, but I didn't really have to memorize any lab values, which I thought was very interesting because in nursing school they really make you memorize those labs, but for NCLEX, at least for my test, there wasn't a specific question that asked me what the range was or I felt like I had to know the range to get the question right. Last bit of advice, while you're taking the exam, if you feel like it's not getting harder, it's okay. So these are computer adaptive tests if you are just starting out your studying routine and don't know a whole lot about the NCLEX. It is supposed to get harder. The way you start is you're at the middle and here's the line and you go up or down based on how you're answering the questions. I didn't think it was that hard, which I'm very nervous to put that out there, but it really wasn't. It wasn't as hard as I was expecting it to be. And I don't know if it's just because of the questions I got or if I was just really prepared. But when I was taking it, I thought, you know, there are some questions I have no idea. And I honestly should have known because I got a couple easy questions wrong. I'm 100% confident on that because I looked at the answer after and I did get it wrong. You will come out of the exam not knowing at all because even I got done and I thought, well, it wasn't as bad as I thought, but it cut me off at 85. So either I did really great or I did terrible and it just said, bye, we can't test you anymore because you failed. I wasn't sure at all. As I was going through it, I thought, when is it gonna start giving me stuff that I have zero clue on and I've never heard of things? And quite honestly, there were maybe a couple things that I hadn't really studied, but there wasn't anything off the wall that I had absolutely thought was made up or never heard of. If you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments down below. If you're about to take it and test, let me know as well. I will see you guys later. Bye.